Well, look at somebody and say, if my people. So if we call by his name and we humble ourselves and do what? Do you know what it means to humble yourself and pray? That means get before God and say all the things that you don't want to say. Most of the time, it's the things people have said about you that you're in denial about. Get before God and say those things. If that is me, if I am doing this, God, you know I talk too much. You know I gossip too much. God, get gossip off me. You know I've been sowing discord because I've been feeling a way about the pastor. Get that off me. That's humbling yourself in prayer. Now, you can get down and do your standardized prayer that you normally do and see how that works for you. But if there are things in your heart, who are you talking to? The God of all gods that knows all and sees all? So you're going to come before him with something in your heart like he don't see it? Like he's supposed to ignore what his word said when he said when you stand praying, forgive, that your prayers will be heard? Like he's going to ignore that and let you come before him any kind of way? Look at somebody and say, it don't work that way. So when you come before him, he said, if my people with your cup on my name will humble themselves. Meaning, get rid of what you want the world to think of you. How you think you, because it's only how you think you look. Trust me. How you think you look. Get before him. It, that doesn't matter anymore. I'm humbling myself. Seek his face. And then do what? Turn from his wicked ways. How you going to have wicked ways? How you going to be in sin and come before him like you're not? He said, only then will, you, will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and then heal the land. Thank you. Look, if you do not know what you are saying, you don't. Black Lives Matter. 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 Yeah, that's 2020. Folks just having church. Looks like there's social distancing. They didn't have many people in there. And this is who BLM is targeting now. And I told y'all that they were chanting, white Jesus is dead. And I told y'all years ago, actually, in one of the sermons when I dealt with them, that these are basically people who are angry at the true and the living God. This is... What's fueling this generation? A lot of hatred, a lot of disappointment, a lot of anger. And you got to realize that in the end times, y'all believe this, the end times? I told y'all, I tell y'all every week, devil has one enemy in the end times. Who's the enemy? The church. Why? Because Jesus threatened him with it. He established it. Thou art Peter. And upon this rock, I'll do what? I will build my church. And the gates of hell are not going to win. You won't be able to do what you're trying to do. That's what he told the devil. Well, that starts with us. We are the ones that prevent him from doing what he's trying to do. Amen. Amen. For the devil to get this bold and do this, and you know, he's doing it on the internet and just whatever he's doing to try to destroy 
people coming together, you must know there is a certain kind of power involved when we are all together. Amen? The folks try to act like, oh, no, no. I mean, it just, why you even have a family reunion? Why you invite folks to your wedding? Why you invite folks to your party? Why you invite folks over your house? Why do you invite folks, period? Why do you want people around? If it's the same thing. You crazy. It's not, look at somebody say, it's not the same. It's not. You know, they used to always say when somebody didn't have home training, you know, somebody wasn't used to being around people, they act a fool. Like, why are they acting such a fool? They're not used to being around people. Because it's a different behavior when you're around a lot of people. That's why some folks keep to themselves because they know they're crazy. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going to fare well in a group. Adamandbeliever.com forward slash the gathering dot PDF. Just amen. All right. The gathering. Amen. Acts 20 and 29. This is Paul speaking and saying that after my departing, after I, I'm out of here, grievous wolves are going to enter in among you. Not sparing the flock. Who is he talking about here? He's talking about the individuals. No, he's talking about the flock, the church. Amen. I mean, it's so funny how nowadays everybody's trying to make all of this individualized, like the fellowship, the gathering, all none of that matters anymore. God is not moving like that. You sound like the devil. Because you're speaking right against what Jesus said. The gates of hell shall what? Man, don't be getting no concordance. Don't try to get a concordance and break it down. We'll see what he was doing. He was standing on a rock and see what the... How are you going to say all that and after the Holy Ghost fell, they started the church? Wasn't a whole bunch of rocks gathered together. He started a church. Then Paul put people, uh, elected elders, to act as pastors, governors of these churches, to keep the churches strong. Then when the churches start wilding, the judge of the churches, Jesus Christ, came and rebuked the churches to keep them going. Amen. Amen. For I know this, Acts 20 and 29, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking what? Perverse things to do what? Draw away disciples. How? After them. So two things are going to happen here that Paul sees. First, the BLM folk going to walk in and enter in among you. So these are outsiders that are going to come in to try to destroy the church. Sometimes they don't come in. They just stay on the internet and do it. But they're going to try to destroy the church. Then he says, also of what? That means some people inside that you're sitting next to are going to arise and start speaking what? Perverted things. To do what? They can't just leave on their own. They have to draw, they have to, they, they got to get some people. They have to get some people. Because if they leave by themselves, they're going to regret it. But if they got some people, they can keep talking about it. What happened to just church? Y'all know we a church. How many of you in here just trying to have church? Like, can we have church? Look at somebody and say, can we have church? Why is it not about church anymore? Like, can we hear the word, apply it to our families, and, and, and make our homes better? And sing a song or two? That's pretty simple, isn't it? Then why can't that happen? Well, listen to this. If it didn't mean anything, 
the devil wouldn't bother. All I, all we doing, I mean, once a week. So we get together once a week. We do a little music, some good music too. A little music. We hear the word, right? Then we fellowship, come together and shake hands and love on one another, and then we go home, right? That's not much. That's not much activity. So why is the devil wanting that to end? Look at somebody and say, he ain't mad at you. Not at all. Therefore, watch and remember. Paul said, for three years, I've been praying about this and warning everyone, night and day, crying. This is how bad he saw it getting after his departure. People going to come in from the outside and try to destroy it. And people that were sitting in here agreeing and clapping and loving it. And oh, it was great. It's great. Oh, I'm so glad I'm here. The Lord brought me here, brought my family. The Lord just loaded up to you all. We didn't do it. The Lord did it. We moved out here. We, we here. We both of us. Yep, yep. Right in here. Men shall arise and start doing what? Speaking what? Why are they doing it? You know, somebody sent me this pastor. He was prophesying. He had a dream. This white guy. Some of y'all seen it. It started out, you know, he was just a pastor, regular guy, whatever, and he put this dream on YouTube, whatever. And somebody sent it to me, and he was saying how he saw wolves coming into the church, and sit, he said he saw the wolves... He said the people that were sitting in the back all had wolves sitting next to them. And they were, you know, their eyes were getting red as the preacher was preaching. He said, but the people that sat close was praying against it. He said, and the wolves didn't bother any other people that were praying, he said, but they came forward and jumped on the pulpit. And the wolves were standing around the pulpit with red eyes growling at the pastor and start biting the pastor. And so the people kept praying. He, he told his dream or whatever, and he said, man, he said, wolves are coming after the church, and it's going to be tough, and this, this, and this. He said this a couple of months ago. I'm like, dude, that's been happening at ABC. <laughs> Yo, late. Yo, dream late. <laughs> and no matter how you preach it, like no matter how much I mention it, no matter how much I say it, somebody is sitting there right now Turn it into a wolf. Because we in the end times. And ain't nothing they... I mean, for Paul to pray three years without ceasing and warning every day at night, he must have known how bad it was going to be. Amen? Amen. All right. So, you know, they got this COVID excuse where they're trying to keep people away from each other, but we all know there's power in us coming together. Amen. When holidays come, you want your family around. Why? It's just different. It's not the same. You can't set a bunch of phones around the table and have a group FaceTime going. It's not. Look at somebody say, it's just not the same. It's just not the same. God's army is not virtual. We don't fight on Zoom. That just ain't going to cut it. But let, let, let President Trump send the troops out on Zoom. Y'all fight China with, on Zoom. You know they starting stuff over with China, right? Y'all know it's about to jump off. He got one more time to say, call it the Kung Flu. <laughs> and that's, that's going to be it. That's it! <laughs> God's army is not virtual. He created man so that he could not only have a physical representat rep representative on the earth, but to have a multitude to congregate as a what? 
So it's all about unity, the unified group. Look at somebody say unity. unity. It's all about unity in the spirit. This is where the power comes from. When they were gathered together on one accord in the upper room, the Bible said wind, mighty Russian wind came in there, filled them all. Cloven tongues of fire appeared on all of their heads. They began to speak in the languages of all the men of Judea and beyond so that they could become witnesses all over the world. All of this power happened because they gathered together in unity on one accord. Discord is the opposite of one accord. And when God starts laying down the things that he hates in Proverbs 6, he said there's seven things he hates. Most of those things centered around gossip, slander, talking too much, and just not agreeing with the multitude. And I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about the church. That's discord. Turning other people against their own leadership is discord. And discord carries immediate judgment. It doesn't wait. Most folk don't know they're being judged when they're judged. You're judged by the condition. Of your home. The condition of your home deteriorates when you sow discord. You never see it the other way around. You never see somebody who's a discord sower prosper and do better. Ever. Immediate judgment. Because that's one of the seven things God says he hates. Now, if God hates it, is he going to reward it? No. So, he created man to come together to congregate as a unified group. Meaning we're unified. Jeremiah 30 and 20. Their children also shall be as aforetime. And their what? Their what? Congregation shall be established before who? Their what? Congregation. And I will punish all that oppress them. Congregation will be established where? Before God. Just like it was a foretime, or just like it was in the days of old. He's going to establish the congregation. It's always about the congregation. When he get in heaven, when we all get to heaven, there ain't going to be no separate booth for you to go sing your solo. Like a Six Flags, you know, sing with the track. You ain't going to be able to do that. You got to sing with everybody. You literally have to step in the crowd and disappear so that we can all be one unified unit. So he sees us as one. Now, how you going to do that then? And you can't do that now. You can't be one with nobody. Everywhere you go, trouble. <laughs> Quit trying to push me to sing them old songs. Now. <laughs> Somebody got happy last week. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> y'all crazy. Individually, y'all, let me set the record straight with this. Quit saying we are the church individually. We're the temple of the Holy Ghost individually. You are not the church. You ain't taking up offering in your chest. You ain't singing the worship song and then having altar prayer and then calling the folks up and then let the deacons get up and take the offering. If you're doing all that in your mind, you schizophrenic. You suffer from MPD, multiple personality disorder. You can't do that. You are not the church by yourself. This temple is not the same as the physical building. It's just not. We're all the temple of the Holy Ghost individually, but collectively we are the body of Christ. Amen. Yes, I'm the body of Christ by myself. No, you're not. 
The Bible says we're all members. It takes everybody to build this body. Somebody's the arm, somebody's the leg, somebody's a... Where did you get this dumb philosophy from? Folks trying to make an excuse because they don't want to go nowhere and be around nobody. And then that's why they're crazy. They don't have nobody to balance about, so they make stupid decisions. S-T-O-O-P. Because you ain't around nobody to tell you that's stupid. The Bible said they had all things in common. How did they have all things in common? They must have knew all things. So the very reason he created the church was to do things what? Collectively that could not be done individually. Or why create it if it can be done individually? Look at somebody say, God is smarter than you. Quit using your mind and what happened at your church. Acts 20 and 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the what? The flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you what? Overseers to do what? Feed the church of God, which he has what? Purchased with his own blood. Is he talking about a person? Made you overseers. The flock. Is a flock one person? If I got a flock of geese, I don't have one goose. That's not a flock. Check out my flock of sheep. Bro, you got one sheep and one of his legs is broke. Nah, you got one sheep. Oh, ah. You just got one and you can't take care of him. That, that's, look at somebody say, one is not a flock. So this, it's impossible, it's virtually impossible for Acts 20 and 28 to be talking about one person. It says flock. And he made you an overseer over the what? The flock. I'm an elder. I'm an overseer over a flock. Elder kid is an elder. He's an overseer over what? A flock. That's a flock. Over which the Holy Ghost made you overseer. So did the Holy Ghost make us overseers? You better hope they did. I'm not being in a church where the Holy Ghost didn't put the person in charge. Amen. I, why would I, oh, Sunday morning, I could be fishing. Why would I be sitting in a church and I don't believe God put them there? And if, if God put them there, then if I'm putting my mouth on them, I'm going against God. So I got to be schizophrenic and I have to have a mental issue in my brain. Something that bubbles up that is not coherent. Something that don't make sense is going on in my dome. If I'm going to make them the man of God. And then curse the man of God. I must be a devil. That's the only thing you can be. Not just the devil, but a grievous what? Woof. Yeah. We don't need the dream to tell us whose eyes are glowing. We just go by the behavior. The behavior tell us whose eyes are red in here. That's the only reason you could be here. You don't agree. You ain't with it. What you doing? Either it's the man of God or it's not. If it is, you in trouble. If it's not, holla. I don't understand. That's so That's just so simple. Flock over the which the Holy Ghost made you overseas to feed the church of God, which he hath what? He purchased it with what? That's what you messing with? How do you think your life's going to turn out? If you messing with the blood. Oh my goodness. Help us Lord. Just because there are bad churches and hireling pastors. Does not rule out God's plan. So there's... It's, it, Yes, there are some, there's some bad churches. There's some folks that got it wrong, some folks that did it wrong, some folks that didn't try to do it wrong, some folks that's purposely trying to do it wrong. All that's out there. That's like finding a job. Ain't it? I mean, ain't nobody perfect. But the Bible tells you what to do when somebody's not perfect. You're supposed to do what? You're supposed to do what? Pray.
pray for. Not take matters in your own hands. Look at your hands. Look at everything you've taken in your own hands, how it turned out. Actually, it intensifies it. Because every enemy that believes the church is not necessary was either offended by a church or hurt by a message in a church. Those are the only people that's fighting the church. They were either offended by a church and folk get offended by all kinds of stuff. I mean, you didn't shake my hand. You didn't shake my hand. Four, five, one dude, nine years later. This is a true story. And Elder Aaron will attest it. Nine years later, he's still mad. Because I didn't let him do something at ABC. Nine, nine years later. I'm not sitting up mad for nine years at nobody. I don't even know where to get that. Like, I don't know how to man up. I don't... Because after nine minutes, I'm good. I get to looking at my wife and my boys and the blessings of the Lord. And I, I, I get all right pretty quick. Amen. I get, I get all right pretty quick. You know, when you marry the right woman, you can be all right real quick. Trouble don't last always if you're married to the right woman. Because when night comes, <laughs> Walter going in over here. What you talking about? Hey, man. What's, man, ain't nobody waking up thinking about you. But it intensifies. Every enemy that believes the church is not necessary, when they go to talking that talk, well, maybe the church is not necessary. You was offended by the church? Or the preaching exposed you. You got hurt by the sermon. Because it does all of us like that. If the word ain't cutting you, then you can't be cut. The word is supposed to cut you. Amen. At one of these days, and it won't be long, the word is going to come for you. So don't be gone. Just take it. We've all had to. Anybody have to sit up here and get sliced? That don't feel good. And y'all get the luxury of just hearing it and, you know, you can ignore it or whatever. God is saying it to me. I can't ignore it. I can't be like, okay, I'm going to preach that, Lord. Uh, you know, I'm not going to apply it. But I'm going to preach it. I can't do that. That would make me schizophrenic, and I'm not. I get to weeping and wailing, have to push it back on Sunday. I can't preach that this uh, I ain't rich. <laughs> Second Thessalonians 2 and 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a what? What's going to happen before the return of Christ? A falling away first. So before the sin, the, the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, before Apollo comes in human form or whatever's going to happen, there's going to be a falling away from the church. The world can't fall away. They're the world. You can only fall away if you're in position. First. And Paul told you, among you they're going to rise up. And they're going to fall away. The gospel's not going to matter. The fellowship's not going to matter. The, 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 the word that's being pre- none of it's going to matter to them because they're going to fall away. Amen. When Elijah saw the host of heaven again, gathered against his enemies, this host represented the power of a gathering. Y'all remember the story, right? So Elijah, Elisha was sitting there and they were afraid because they saw the army coming at him and it was many people and they didn't have, they, they just felt like, hey, we about to lose. There's too many people. And Elijah prayed, the Bible says. And when he opened his eyes, the Bible said he saw multitudes ready to war on horses all around them just ready to just do it <laughs> second king six i had an elijah experience like that i'll tell you in a second same goes with our gathering together to sing praises pray and fellowship with each other so the same thing goes when we come together that heavenly host represented us coming together 
Yes, it does. It represents us. Because when we come together, we look like that in the spirit realm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I had an Elijah experience when I was in uh, Toronto, Canada. And I was shooting part six. Uh, detained for entry. And that day, who was here? Was, was somebody else there? That's here? You were there, Eric. You sure were. That was before you was married, right? Yeah, Eric was there. I remember that. And uh, we were there, and so I did the message or whatever, and then at the end, I did an altar call. There was 6,500 6, people there, 6,500 people. I did the altar call, and 2,000 plus came to the altar and manifested demons. Remember that? <laughs> they all manifested demons. I mean, it was like the night of the living dead in there. I just I didn't know what to do. And so I was sitting there like, okay, if I try to go individually and cast these demons out, I'd still be there now. There's too many people. It's like, so what do I do? And the, God, and, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you're not by yourself. He said, just pray the prayer. You're not by yourself. I started praying the prayer and angels just started coming in there. And folk just started getting delivered and set free. Demons was coming out of people without anybody walking up to them. It was amazing. One of God's greatest feats in my lifetime that I've personally witnessed. Because I had no idea. I couldn't even get out of there to get to my seat. They were everywhere. And it was crazy. Because, you know, Canada is, is, they on something different. But God will do it. When you think it's just you, that's why he doesn't want us to ever avenge ourselves. The number, listen, the number one rule in following God is to never defend yourself. You know why God wants you to never defend yourself? Because he knows how to hurt your enemy. You don't. So I'll be thinking sometimes, but if I get to him and I speak the word and I try to show him and I treat him, and God is like, bro, you don't understand, they hate you. So if they hate you, even the gospel you preach, they hate. They're blasphemers. When it comes from you, it's wrong. So you can't teach them out of how they feel. You can't stop them from hating you by teaching them or using the word. It was the word you spoke that made them hate you. But when God addresses your enemy, he said, your enemies will become my enemies. Why was that key when he said that? Because he knows what makes them afraid. Now think about that. You fighting with what you know of a person, but you don't know everything about a person. But God can pull up something and folk just go to disappearing. What happened to them? Uh... Look at somebody and say, God knows your enemy. Yeah. So the Lord, uh, the Bible says in 2 Kings 6 and 17, and Elijah prayed, and the Lord and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about who? Elisha. The devil is afraid of us gathering together. Singing and worshiping in a unified setting is a what? Threat to the devil. The power of our unified frequency. This is about sound. Our unified frequencies disturbs the atmosphere and powerfully pierces through his kingdom of darkness with light. Yeah, I taught y'all that in part eight. But 2 Corinthians 20 and 22 gives you an example of it. Jehoshaphat, when they were gonna, uh, he was coming against uh, the armies of the pagans, all of the ites. He was coming against the army of the Ites, the Hittites, the different ones, uh, the Edomites, Moabites, all of them. And God didn't even want them to use their hands. He just wanted them to use frequencies. 
And the Bible says, and when they began to do what? Sing and to praise the Lord. I mean, sing and to praise. The Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. And they were what? Smitten. They got whipped by singing and praising. The Bible says God, they didn't even have to fight. But they were a unified unit and began to sing and praise on one accord. Unified. And it was powerful enough to defeat their enemies. Now, this tells you everything about why the devil don't want us coming together. Because he used to lead this. This was his area. We are his replacements. We are built in the likeness and the image of the very God that dismissed him. So we're built in the image of God. So when God dismissed him, we dismissed him. Not only do we dismiss him, but we take his place. Now we're able to offer a praise and a worship to God that he couldn't offer. And then when we all come together, we offer one with power of our unified corporate worship. Amen? This is why when we, sing, when we praise God and pray as a unified group, we are taking God's side against the devil. He don't mind the homosexual singing. Amen. He don't mind him taking the secular songs and making them gospel. That don't bother him. He wrote those. <laughs> oh, but when it's a new song. A song about how we defeated him in an area in our lives. Oh, that bothers him. Ezekiel 28 and 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Speaking of Lucifer, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. So he got kicked out. And we are here. Look at somebody say, you're his replacement. And we're a better model. The devil is collecting people to side with him. I preached about this in one of the truth behind hip-hop, the sympathy of the devil. I mean, sympathy for the devil. The Rolling Stones song and how the Luciferians believe that he was unfairly treated. He was treated unfairly. God should have allowed him to stay in heaven, but he was kicked out because he tried to take over heaven. Yeah, so he's collecting people that will side with him. Feel sorry for me. Sympathize with me. You side with him when you are influenced by him to not gather with the saints or find the fellowshipping of the saints to be trivial and inconsequential. Not important. That's how you side with him because that's how he feels. He was cast out of the fellowship and he wants you out of the fellowship as well. John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but to do what? And destroy. That's, that's his purpose. And he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal you out of the fellowship. Kill you and destroy you. But I am come that they may have life, that they might have it what? More abundantly. Nothing upsets and offends a person more than reminding them of what they lost. When a person is reminded of what they lost, a special kind of murder and hate comes up in their heart toward the very thing that they gave up. Amen? Yeah, yeah. When they make that emotional decision, nothing will offend them more than them seeing that their emotional decision meant nothing to anybody else but them. Amen. People want to affect something. They want to feel like their presence mattered. 
So when I leave, it's going to end. Then when they see it don't end, they get very upset, murderously upset. Because they don't have it no more. Can I preach in here? The devil hates being reminded of what he lost. So he made an emotional, did he have emotions? Yeah, I guess he did. So he made an emotional decision in heaven to go against the God of gods in heaven. Heart messed up, everything. God kicked him out. So the reason the devil is the devil right now, still, still trying to destroy the church, is because he made a decision that he can't change. He can't repent. He can't go back. You know, it ain't the same when Big Mama put you out. Big Mama put you out, she might let you back in. Most of the time, she will. Just get out. Get your stuff. Get out. Call her back later that night. What you cooking, Big Mama? Well, I got some yams on the stove, but you know, you owe me an apology. And Big Mama take you back. Look at somebody say, God's not Big Mama. <laughs> See, the reason why is because if God says it, it has to happen. Because he's God. So if he says, I cast you out, you're out because he's God. Like you can't come back because word says you're out. That's why Jesus had to come to stand in between and show the blood to give us mercy in the time of need. Because God's word, oh, that's why he can't do sin. I know I'm preaching. Yes, this is good, too. Yeah, so this is what upsets the devil, reminding him what he lost. That's how people get madder and madder and madder and madder at a situation that they messed up because they can't go back. This is how the devil feels every day. Every day. He wake up, well, do he sleep? He probably can't sleep. How can you sleep when you messed heaven up? Like you had it made, man. You was the lead dude. Messed it up. So now he want to mess it up for you. He want to mess it up for everybody and he going to keep messing it up until Jesus comes. He is trying to shut down what he was once a part of. So every time we sing a worship song, he's mad. Every time we come together and pray corporately, he's upset. Ezekiel 28 and 18. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, I will bring a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. So this is going to happen, y'all. We're going to be able to see the devil as he is. Ashes. Yeah, he's going to pay. Right now, he's just getting all the people that are with him. But he's going to pay. This is the very reason he continues to attack the church. He is upset about the decision he made, and he wants the same for you. He wants you to be upset the same way. He wants you to feel what he is what? How many of you want to feel what the devil is feeling? I don't want to feel that. That's got to sting. But he wants you to feel how he feels. Proverbs 16 and 14, I mean 6 and 14. Frowardness is where? In his heart. He devises mischief. How? Continually. He does what? So with discord. The devil knows that there is more power in a physical gathering of believers than a virtual one. I told y'all when the first COVID thing happened and they shut the church down, that that's the devil's agenda. Now, somebody else may be trying to make some money. Somebody else may be trying to do something else or whatever. But the devil is like, bingo. I need the church to cease. 
Because if they keep coming together, they are reminding me of what I lost. He knows that if we unify, love one another. Mm, there's no love in the devil. I know the devil can't love nobody. I remember John Ramirez said, he was like, man, he said, one day I just woke up after the devil blinded him for three years. He working for the devil. He's the devil's right hand man. The devil got mad at him, blinded him for three years. He said after he got his sight back, he started thinking, you know what? <laughs> this ain't a good job. <laughs> How you work for the devil? What happens when you make the devil mad? It's crazy. So, the devil knows that if we unify and if we do what? Love. Love one another. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. That's the kind of love where we care enough for one another that we're going to be there. Now, we're going to tell you the truth. But we're going to be there if you're part of the unified body. Amen? So the devil knows if we, mm, if we unify, if we love one another, worship, praise, pray together, we will block his efforts of division and discord. You think he wants us to block his efforts? No, it's the end now. Psalms 133 and 1. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for what? Brethren, to do what? Dwell together in unity. Summary! Jesus could have come to earth alone and died alone. He could have came alone, hid somewhere, gave his life. His blood still would have worked. The reason he didn't live that way is because he understood that people together are powerful. Why would he get a group? Y'all still here? Yeah. <laughs> you see the lights being on. I just, I just see darkness. Yeah. So, I mean, why did he gather some guys? Why did he get a group? Why did he get a crew? He knew that if I get a crew, it's going to be more effective than just me. It's going to be more powerful than just me. He even said, y'all are going to be able to do greater than what I was able to do. Because you got a group. Y'all are a group. The reason he didn't, well, because of the Holy Ghost, but it was still more powerful because there's more than one. The reason he didn't live that way is because he understood that people together are powerful. Every powerful move of God against his enemies in the Bible utilized large groups of people. Yeah. The Bible even says that one can put to flight a certain amount of enemies and more than one can yield even greater success. One can put to flight a certain amount of enemies and more than one can yield even greater success. So why are the modern day preachers and teachers saying that the church is not God's will and the gathering of the fellowship is outdated? Because the internet brings just as much revenue through views and likes as the modern day prosperity preacher. You build a big enough following, you're going to rake in the cash. Online. And nobody has to gather. The people of the technocracy can post things to draw crowds and get paid as well. Also, there are a lot of pastors that only pastor for fame and money anyway. So yes, it's a mess out there. Look at somebody and say, it's a mess out there. <laughs> it's a mess out there. We know that. Right? It's a mess out there. But that does not change God's intent of creating the church and its great significance in these times. The power of a physical gathering versus a virtual gathering is obvious. This is why the devil wants us to all distance from each other. If he can make us fearful of dying if we connect, then he can make us feel the way he feels. Demons in his hierarchy don't even like him. They keep 
their distance. Yeah, I've talked to folks that deal with the spirit realm, all of this. They keep their distance. They don't go around the devil. I've cast demons out and called a demon Satan, or, 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 and, and they like, don't call me him. I'm like, don't you work for him? Yeah, but don't. Yeah. It's like, ugh. Gosh. Why are you working for him then? I mean, they would really just get, just, I mean, detest if you accidentally call or if they think you, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here. But you're a demon. Yeah, but I am. I mean, is there that much different? What kind of kingdom is that when can't nobody stand each other? But demons in his hierarchy don't even like him. They are only with him because they are evil like him. You're just teaming up because you're evil, but you don't even like each other. <laughs> My goodness gracious. This is a sad reality that he must live with daily. The devil has to live with this daily. All the beauty of heaven. All the wondrous things in heaven. I mean, streets made of gold. Many mansions. Y'all know we're going to be living large in heaven. Does anybody know that? Why? He said, God said, why are you even looking for a house here on earth? And it's going to be worthless after a while anyway. He said, where I go, there are many mansions. The devil had access to all of that. You lead the worship, everything. And you blew it. You left it. You didn't want it no more the way it was. You wanted it your way. So you got kicked out. Now you just keep hearing the worship. Now you keep hearing the praise. Now you keep seeing it all happen without you. That's a harsh reality. Every day you hear it. Every day you see it. You can't stop it. You weren't as important as you thought. Yeah, that'll make you evil. This is a sad reality that the devil must face and live with daily. He can only draw evil to himself and has to settle with the dark fellowship of demons because of the decision he made long ago. So his job and purpose is to draw you away from the light into the darkness with him. He wants you to draw, I mean, yeah, he wants you to draw what he draws and do what he does so you will feel what he feels. If he was good with his decision to go against God, he would be settled in it. He's not good with his decision, y'all. I asked the Lord this, what is the devil's problem? And that's where this entire message came from. He's not good with his decision. He wants his place back. He can't have it back, so let's just destroy it all. But every act of fighting against it and destroying others in the process proves that he is not good with his decision and probably regrets it. If he does not regret it now, he will during his eternal punishment. Amen. Amen. But, look at somebody say, we are not children of the dark. <laughs> look at somebody. I know it's dark in here. But look at somebody and say, we are not children of the dark. But we are children of the light. We come together to worship God. Sing, pray, pray, and fellowship with like-minded believers. How? On one accord. On one accord. All of this resembles heaven and the heavenly hosts that sit around the throne. There will be no virtual praise in heaven. There will be no virtual new heaven and earth. There will be no virtual mansions and streets of gold. All of it will be what? Real. real. Look at somebody and say, I got a real mansion coming. 
a real mansion. It's not going to be X's and O's and WWW. No, it's going to be a real mansion. What we do now is rehearsal for what we will do This is just a rehearsal. Because when we get to heaven, sing it, Robert! (laughs) Yeah, this is just rehearsal for what we will do eternally. So I was like, well, Lord, folk don't like to do it now. If you don't like to do it now, you don't like to be with the folks now. If you don't like to worship with the saints now, if you don't like order now, if we are reluctant to come together and unify now, how will we desire to come together then? Our circumstances should not dictate our outcome. We should fight for the assembling together, fight for the worship together, fight for the praying together, and fight to just be together. To watch the end, what? (laughs) Unfold. I mean, when they told me I couldn't have church, I couldn't sleep. I'm like, no, we got to come together some kind of way. We're not missing a Sunday. I mean, because that's our day. That's where we do what we do as believers. You're not taking that day from me. We are one in Christ, so we must show the devil he cannot and will not change who we are. Amen? Amen. This is powerful right here. Psalms 149 and 1. Praise ye the Lord. Is he talking about just one person? Somebody. Well, he could be. Okay, let's keep reading and see. Let's see which one of us is right. Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a what? Sing unto the Lord a what? I will sing unto you, Lord, a new song. And what? Skip to the next part. What kind of song are we going to sing? No, a song of... And gives me peace that I could not find without you a song of victory that keeps my mind at ease and brings your presence closer and closer to me. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Amen. We're going to sing unto the Lord a new song. Y'all don't understand how the power got. Yeah, the devil hated what you just did. Like you just made him madder than you've made him in a long time. Just because as a unified body, we said and stated and did. All of it right then. You said it. You stated it. You declared it. And then you sung it. The new song. Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a what? And his praise in the what? In the what? In the what? In the what? Congregation. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be what? Joyful in that king. Let them praise his name in what? Dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the what? For the Lord taketh pleasure in who? In who? This is a group. He takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. 
let the saints be joyful in glory. Listen, let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be where? And the two-edged sword where? Listen, listen, y'all. Now, this is talking about right now. This is what the devil is afraid of. Because you keep hearing the end times and the mark of the beast and this is going to happen and we all, we just all in the... No, we win. And here's how. To execute vengeance upon the what? Heathen. And punishment upon who? To bind their kings. That's the elite. Bind their kings with what? And their nobles with what? Now listen. To execute upon them the judgment written this what honor. honor that's a military term this honor have who all, all of whose saints his saints praise ye the lord everyone stand to your feet come on pj get on the keyboard because i just think we need to give god Praise the unified body, turn the lights on, unified body of Christ. Let's praise him. He deserves the praise. Come on, lift your hands up to it. Father God, we give you praise. We praise you in this hour. This is your hour. You are worthy of our praise in this hour. We're not afraid in this hour. We are the ones that will execute vengeance upon the heathen, punishment upon the wicked people, binding kings with chains, nobles with fetters, executing judgment. You've given us this honor, this privilege we praise you Lord we worship you Lord we glorify you Lord in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation we will sing unto you a new song let your praises be heard from our lips come on praise him right now let his praises be heard. The devil has just tried his best to distract you. Tried his best to plant seeds of discord in you. Tried his blessed best to turn your heart in the last hour. But right now we give God praise. We're going to stand in this last hour. We're going to stand in this last and evil day. We're going to stand in these end times. We're going to stand. We're going to stand. We're going to stand. Hallelujah. 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 And no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No tongue that rises up against me in judgment shall stand. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for your word. And thank you for keeping us focused on what's important in this hour. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Come on, just think about the things he's done for you. Think about where he brought you from. He deserves it right now. He deserves your praise right now. Right now. Hallelujah. We'll forever give you the praise, Lord. The glory.
and the honor. Come on, PJ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. We owe you this praise, Jesus. your hands right there and just tell him he's worthy of it for how you kept my family God you're worthy for how you provide for us you're worthy for how you saved us you're worthy and we owe you everything I owe you everything God I owe you Shown me your grace and mercy, even when I did not deserve it. So I owe you everything, yeah. I owe you everything. Lord, here's my heart, my mind, my whole life. I hope Come on, let's just say that. Say, I owe you everything. I owe you everything. Tell them, I owe you everything. I owe you everything. God, I owe you. I owe you everything. Because you've been faithful. Because you are God. God, I owe you. Come on, tell them one more time. Say, I owe you, I owe you every, Jesus, I owe you, God, I owe you, yeah, Lord, I owe you. Now, come on, somebody give them praise right there. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, PJ. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all listen, we're going to make it through this. Amen. Don't be fearful. There's no other place I'd rather be to go through these trying times than with the fellowship of true adamant believers. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated.